Hi, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Weekly Roundup. My name is Frankie and today we have a very special guest. Hi, I'm Ryan from The Coffee Break. We make news easy for you to read. So if you guys have been following the Weekly Roundup every week, The Coffee Break is the one that provides us with all the news. So if you want to read concise news within 3 minutes to kickstart your day, sign up to The Coffee Break in the link in the description. Without further ado, let's go straight into our first news of the day. Let's start. Okay, right. We know that today the economic condition is not very steady and all that, right? And a big reason is because of the US. And the US has this one very big problem now, which is the commercial real estate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So apparently right in the US right now, they are experiencing an all time high of office vacancies right now. It's about eighteen point two percent based on the coffee breaks. <laughs> the coffee yeah. breaks Yeah, yeah I mean like right? dude, that's one in yeah. one out of every five office that is that, yeah, is, that is that is vacant man. Correct, correct. And I think one of the reason why this is happening is because during the pandemic everyone was working at home you know they couldn't move around and things like that and after things get settled down a little bit everyone got used to it yeah, so yeah, now yeah, a lot yeah. of officers they practice hybrid working right so only a few days you go back to the office and whatnot so a lot of all these businesses and with the high interest rate and environment and all that businesses are starting to cut costs so one yeah. of the costs that they could cut is, is rental is rental, correct? So therefore they said, okay, lah, you all like to work at home so much, right? Continue to work from home. I'm going to terminate my office. Uh, makes, it tenancy. makes sense for them. It makes perfect sense. Correct. Um, so that's one of the reasons why one, one in our five offices is vacant today. Lah. So this thing has become a big problem. And a lot of all these commercial real estate loans, right, is going to expire and ready for refinance mm. in I think 2025 or, or 2026. Businesses is not doing well and all that. I don't think whether they are able to do it or not. And I think this issue has triggered the government to start thinking. Yeah, yeah. as they as, as any government should, right? Like if you've seen, because you've got all the statistics, what's happening in the market, like who is renting, who is not renting, right? So Correct. And all this commercial real estate debt, right? It's not small amount, it's $1.5 trillion. Dude, oh. that's a big hole to cover. That's a big, big hole to cover. Yeah, right. Big hole to cover over there. But the US president already got a plan. Printing more money? Oh, no. no. Uh, no, oh, no cannot no. print already. <laughs> the, the Fed already say cannot print money, right? <laughs> so they, they have to be more creative lah, in terms of solution. Actually, US got two problems. Number one is the commercial real estate problem. Yeah. No? Yeah. The other thing is because everyone stay at home and then as more people want to live the American dream, they migrate there and whatnot. Actually, housing, there's a shortage right there right now. Mm. So there's not enough house, but you have too many offices. So President Biden has this smart idea. Why not <laughs> we convert all the offices, all the vacant offices, lah, not, not all offices. Why not we convert all vacant offices into homes? But uh, it, it's a bit different there in the sense there is um, zo- there's zoning regulations, right? Mm. So how are they going to do this? Zoning regulation, okay. Like different, mm. di- like commercial zone, residential zone. I think that that's probably one challenge that they will. Make. Roger, oh yeah lah. Uh, Roger, but Roger will be very ugly lah, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah. Have, you have one building with office. Imagine your hand outside, like. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> In order to make it happen, well, regardless of all this zoning issue and whatnot, right? The president is ready to fork out thirty-five billion dollars for the developers to do refitting on all these properties to make into homes. What do you think about that? Do you think that will encourage developers to do it? Or do you think there's still a lot of reserve to say that mm, maybe you shouldn't for long-term repercussion? There will be some rent takers. People will do it because there's a grant. So there's money from the government. They would, they would do it. Mm. But to what extent will it help the residential crisis? That remains to be seen. Do people want to stay in offices? Do people want to stay in office areas? So who are you renting out to? Because are you renting to someone who is going to be desperate or, or like, do they really want a nice space? So it, it remains to be seen if people want to live in those spaces. Unless you are like renting to the homeless, but the homeless can't pay, right? Because I mean, un- 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 unfortunately they can't pay, right? In this situation, so like- Office spaces are usually in prime areas, you know? You should want to give it to the homeless exa- people. E- e- exactly, so where is the crisis? Like, who is it really helping? Yeah. Is it really helping the people who have the housing crisis or is it really helping the people who own the commercial buildings? Right, I think that's that, that question mark. I mean, whatever the government is trying to do, the US government is trying to do, it, it better work, man, because that debt, mm-hmm. there's a, it's a ticking time bomb. It's going to come due before the end of 2025. So let's see. Let's see how it just pans out. So the next thing we have in line is actually electric vehicles. The industry is not as rosy as it seems, right? So you've got Ford 
announced its plans to pause um, its investments into electric vehicle because they are thinking that customers will not pay a premium. So like you have got your ICE, your internal combustion engine cars today and who are maybe priced at $30,000. But you know, EVs, EVs anywhere in the world in general, they have a premium. The only reason why some EVs are cheaper is because the incentives the governments are giving them, right? Mm -hmm. So so Ford is one of the first to take say, hey guys, we're gonna this EV party is fun, but I'm gonna take a pause because it's costing a bit more money. Right? And we don't money. think there's a demand for this. So that's what that's what Ford thinks, right? Okay, wait. Would you buy an EV today? No? If the price is right, I would buy. Right? If the price is right, if they can bring it down to let's say an affordable price range of 50, 60,000 for air for, for Malaysians, right? I think that's probably like very affordable, like that's where my V sits. Mm. If they can bring to that price range, yeah, why, why not? Like mm. if it's an electric car, but if it's a premium of 100 grand, now you're talking about money installments about 1,000 or, or right. so. That's going to be a bit straining for a lot of a lot of, a yeah. lot of Malaysians, right? So for now, I wouldn't buy it yet. And I don't think the infrastructure is here in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, but even, eventually, if the price is right, the incentives are right, yeah, why not? But this is a chicken and egg situation, you know? Because the reason why my V can sell at 50, 60,000 today because is because it's my V, it has economies of scale. Yeah. yeah. They can lower down the price to 50, 60,000. But if let's say, for example, Ford decides to cut output and every other car makers is going to follow suit, right? Supply is going to be lower. It's very hard to bring yeah. the price down. Yeah. yeah. And on the other hand, especially for Malaysia, right? Because we're enjoying fuel subsidy. Yeah. You know, every yes. liter that you pump is two ringgit and five cents, yes. which is ridiculous, right? There's no incentive to to actually motivate me to go and change to an EV car today, like, put it that way. Correct. Even though the car may be cheap. Correct. Yeah. But they are going to change that next year, right? With the, they're going to change the, yeah, with the, the, with the subsidy rational, mechanism, With the right? rationalization of subsidy. So maybe yeah. that would prompt people to change. I don't know. Mm. But for me, like, you're right. That 205 is very addictive. So, mm. But Ford is not the only one, it seems. It looks like General Motors is also abandoning its plan um, oh. to build 500,000 500, EVs by next year. Honda, all right, a bit closer to home, Honda has also ended its development for an affordable EV. Right, so right. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's not as easy as it seems. Like. Tesla probably had it easy. No, would they wouldn't say have it easy, but they probably had the advantage of being a first mover. So yeah. they made it seem easy. They they have achieved the economies of scale, right? But I suppose when your factories have to operate an ICE vehicle, like have to like you know make an ICE vehicle at the same time make an electric vehicle, probably very different mechanisms, right? Because mm. you're not gonna it's one is mainly on battery, the other one is mainly on like mainly on fuel. So the construction of it is different. And these guys can't reach the scale. Yet. Unfortunately, can't reach the scale at this point in time. So, you know what? I think Tesla is actually the party pooper right they here. Are. Right? You they know why? Are. Because in the past, this year itself, they've actually reduced their prices by a couple of times, right? I think two times or something like that. I, I think and, so. I, and I, 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 because they are the leader in the EV sector, when they lower down the price, how can other players say I want to sell at a premium? It's, it's a little bit more difficult. So when the prices comes down, it's very hard for a lot more um, car makers to make a profit. Maybe that's one of the reasons why they say they want to cut production also. It could, it could be like, because you, if you're looking at such a competitive space, maybe you when you plan the project, you plan to price the car at 50,000. But now Tesla is selling at 45. Oh, then you huh? can't reach the economy of scale, right? Like, Correct. how can you going to match the price? So, it, it's likely could be the case. So, even if you look at, um, you, you look at, if you've moved down that value chain, right? Look at yes. Hertz, one of the car rental giants. They are also starting to feel the pain when they, when they have oh, for sure, convert man. some of their fleet for into sure. like electric vehicles, right? Correct. So, and all these fleets have depreciation costs. Because Tesla reduced the price, right? Mm. And then, like, while electric cars very like known to have few maintenance because you know you know you don't have heating elements let's say you don't have like an engine and all that but there are also other things that you know because they're heavy as a result maybe you have to change the tires more frequent you have to rotate the tires right and and these are things that could also be dampening the demand from the from the consumers yeah right apparently you need to change tire more often on the ev car because of the instant talk that you get yeah yeah i'm not surprised like yeah. you know like is this physics right there's more more uh, friction. Thought. There's more friction, more right? Friction. Because you can, right. while it's nice, that feeling is nice when you accelerate, but gra mm. gravity is gravity. It's not, it's not going to change. Talking about the environment, mm. the government also has a pretty decent plan next year to incentivize the states via this ecological fiscal transfer for bio biodiversity conservation. conversation. This eh? is this is conservation. The, sorry, this yeah. is the Malaysian government, right? The Malaysian government. Oh, okay. The Malaysian government. They're, okay. They're allocating 200 million in next year's budget, uh, and which is higher than 150 million this year. Yeah. Oh, 50 million extra for the states. For the states. Okay. Kelantan may have some trouble um, get, get, getting the money if they, if they proceed the plan, right? If they proceed to 
amend the development plan. What do they want to do? Kelantan apparently has made a, in, in the state's executive council in 2021, decided that permanent forest reserves area are not water sources or water catchment places. And this will no longer be considered as ESAs. ESAs meaning uh, environmentally sensitive areas, wait, right? Wait, wait, this, this, this is getting a little bit technical. I, I'm a bit lost right here. So what do you mean by forest reserve becomes water, water catchment? So, what, do, what does that mean? Okay, so like, yeah. This is a bit more geographical. I have to visit back my uh, my, my in like can you know, from four from five, right? So can you're smart enough. Or, or like from three or whatever. Mm. So forest reserves. Why are they called forest reserves? Because they are actually water catchment areas. So this is a bit of a segue, right? Why are they called forest reserves in the first place? Is that when it rains, it catches the water. It mm. it ensures that people, the places that we live, the lower the lower lying areas will not be flooded because there is the forest to catch the water. Catch uh, the true water. La, because if you don't have forest, then you put everything concrete. When it rains, the concrete just let the water just flow down like that, Correct. right? Correct. Right. Right. So, that, so I, in a way, I mean, maybe what the government is trying to do by incentivizing people to, incentivizing the states to look at this, um, to conserve the bio, biodiversity of the state is that, hey, you may help to reduce infrastructure damage from floods. Mm. Right, it's, a, it's, it's sort of like- It's, it's a natural solution. It is, it is, yeah. right? Because more forests, meaning there's less prone for floods. Uh, okay, so and you comply more towards ESG also. Yeah, right? and and BSG is such a big thing in the next in the next few years. Mm. The government is trying to drive more FDIs uh, right. via these ESGs, right? So, yeah. So in in, in a way, um, Klan, Klantan may might face some might have some issue with this if they were to amend their development plans. Right. A man means what? They don't they don't see their forest as a water catchment area. Yeah. So they are going to change that into They're gonna open up those areas for exploitation. <gasps> oh so you can take those forests out, you can do development there, then what's then what's gonna what's gonna happen? Oh because I I, I suppose every every state also has its own quota to meet, right? So if you want to like if you have um if you have sort of gone through with your plans, then the government would then pay the pay the incentives to you. But if you if you don't follow through with your plans to like do the conservations, mm. then what's what 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 is the government going to incentivize you right. for, right? So okay, so so the government is not very happy about what Kelantan wants to do with their forest reserve. So because of that, I think they want to take away their incentive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So talking about that reserve area, right? Like Climate Watchdog Rimba Watch estimated that if the plan is approved, if the Demolition Plan that the Kelantan government is approved, 88% of the forest reserve areas will no longer fall under the classification mm -hmm. that will entitle them for that. For oh. that incentive. So right. Kelantan is going to turn into a concrete jungle, la, just like KL. Clank, I mean, if, if they if they, Valley, right? if they are developed enough, la, if they can be developed enough, yeah, as so, such. So, Think about it. Is it a good thing or or a bad thing if, let's say, they really want to change, change, change those forest reserve into yeah? No lah, no lah, not no, not, right. not not at that price lah, not at the price of sacrificing the forest lah. It's too costly. It's, it's too, too costly. costly. But anyway, so far I think the government has already paid Kelantan twenty nine million ringgit since twenty nineteen until this year. So. Think about it, 29 million, if you translate that into a Mercedes-Benz price, you know, Kelantan Yeah, 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 yeah. So, if let's say, for example, one unit of Mercedes-Benz is about 650,000, 29 million would be about 44 cars. 44. 44 cars, that's, uh, uh, never mind, we don't talk too much. <laughs> Another sensitive issue, uh. this one's sensitive or not this week? I think a bit sensitive, like this one, because this, Week has like a there's a big review by the public account accounts committee oh. on COVID nineteen. Okay. So we bought vaccines and we bought all that uh, in 20, 2020, uh, like twenty twenty one, right? Mm. So there was a big hoo ha this week because based on the report, it it shows that whatever Malaysia did on COVID nineteen, we suffered a loss of five hundred and five million. Five hundred and five million ringgit. And this is purchasing vaccines, over purchasing vaccines. How many? Vaccines extra that only eight point five million doses. Only not too many. Yeah. Not too many. Okay. Uh. Malaysia uh. only got thirty three million population. Eight point five million is close to one third. Really. Extra budget lah. Extra, extra budget, budget lah. La. Right. But budget for more, right? Because I think okay, there's also some short sighted in planning, right? We, we, which we can't tell, which we can't blame. I'm not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna point any fingers, mm. right? Because at the point in time, 2022, 2021, you look at it, eh. Maybe you think people need more vaccine. 2022, mm. I think, was the last dose. So pe people were, they weren't encouraging the fourth dose, but they were actively trying to convince people to take the fourth dose. Mm. But I, I, didn't, I didn't think I had fourth dose. Did you? No, no, no. I, I didn't as well. So I stopped at three and, 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 mm. and, and, and that was it. So yeah, there, there were some expired vaccines, dude. 
Remember that time uh, Pharma Niaga actually made an announcement that says that they may have to write off their vaccines. This is the vaccine, lah, right? It, it, it doesn't say. It doesn't say, but very likely so. But all is not as bad as it seems because to mitigate the vaccine vestiges, Malaysia also donated to countries such as like Bangladesh, Myanmar, Laos. We donated about 1.89 million doses. Oh but ha- had we not donate those vaccines, it would have been another 112 million loss. <gasps> yeah. That would have been what 10 million dosage extra, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's how prepared we were, lah. That's how prepared the government was, lah. Give them some credit, lah. Uh, that's, that's how prepared, yeah. lah. Oh, I mean, I'm trying to look yeah. at. I'm trying to give it a positive spin, lah, because it's not a good news. I'm genuinely speechless. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, the extra dosage of COVID-19 vaccine is not the only issue pointed out in the PSC report. That's also about the ventilator. Yes. Yes. Right? So during that time, uh, I st- I still recall during COVID-19, we were sh- we were short of ventilators. People were going into ICUs and then some sometimes people even need to share ventilators. It was tough times, lah. Those tough were tough times, times. right? Okay. Those so times. one of the short-term solution during that time was to quickly buy from whatever sources that they could find. Yeah. Right? And they even bought it via WhatsApp apparently. Yeah, based on the based report. On, like, based on the report, they bought it via from WhatsApp. WhatsApp. A government buying supplies through WhatsApp. Have you bought anything from WhatsApp before? No. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think. Even we don't like we buy we buy food also we buy from food delivery platforms. But I think they were desperate. Mm. Uh, because at that point in time it was more like, oh whoever can get us ventilators, we will buy it from you. Mm. It was desperate times, we didn't know what I think there were just no proper SOPs in place for all this kind of I mean, because it was emergency. But saying it was emergency and there were no SOPs is a very weak excuse, right? Because, dude, 104 out of those 136 ventilators purchased, right, were defective. 104? Yes. 104 is almost everything already, right? Yeah. Almost everything be is used. defective. My God. How? Dude, it's like, how? how? How did this happen? It's like, no one checked the specs, man. Cannot be, right? No one checked the specs. No one checked, like, whether. Um, Wait, whether sure it got fit. One, Apparently, it's not registered because there was no written agreement between Pharma Niaga and the health ministry. No one wants to take responsibility on this defective, um, ven- defective ventilators. Oh, so now play the blaming game already lo, between yeah. the MOH and the Pharma Niaga. Lo. Quite an expose la, this week. La. I mean, it, it just uh, it dominated the news. La. Yeah. Right? So, so, of course, um, one, of the health, one of the health ministers, I think K- KJ, former health minister, came and said, okay, he took. He took full responsibility for the vaccine. Vaccine, right? Yeah. Um, I think it was. I saw that news. It was. It was. Um, I don't know. I mean, we we just don't know what happened, lah. Like, uh, proper planning, poor okay. poor planning, and there was no encouragement of maybe like asking you to take vaccines and all that. Poor planning. Could they have salvaged it? Could they have made it better? I think they could have, lah. But right. yeah, lah. I mean, there mm. was a lot of hoo-ha last year as well, right? Towards mm. the end of last year, there was a change yeah. in government. Why so long politics. no ventilators? Why so long no vaccine? You know, these yeah. kind of arguments were going on during yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, So, anyway, like the health ministry, the pharma nega, they've been blaming each other, like, over the over the forty ventilators. Apparently. Apart from MOH, Ministry of Health and Pharma Niaga, they are blaming each other. There's another person <laughs> is also involved. And this, this guy, I, no matter how I think, right, I don't know how this guy comes into picture. And this guy is our former transport minister, Mikas Yong. Dude, his, his name was mentioned 72 times in the report. 72 times. He was not the health minister. Correct. He was a health minister. What is he going to do with him? Was he, he in was any the committee? Former transport minister. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know how he got involved in this, but apparently it was through his connections that they have bought those ventilators. Okay lah. The only reason I can think of is because he's Chinese. He can speak Mandarin, so he could he could facilitate that communication between Malaysia and China. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And as a transport minister, he facilitated the logistics lah. I think that's as far as he went lah. Um. But logistics is taken care of by Pharma Nagar Logistics already, ma. Don't know. Yeah. Maybe at the time, yeah, at the time they had to get some emergency um, clearance and all that for the planes to fly. Maybe, maybe. But he was mentioned. Uh, but it was not. So it was also not him. Um, it was also not um, KJ that was involved in the purchase of the ventilators. It oh. was a minister that was very famous for this act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I think like it was very hectic. Like if you see the deliberations in the report, it was like you know someone calling this out, someone calling mm. that out. It was very hectic at that point in time. Um, but I think it's still very poor excuse. Emergency is a poor excuse. Mm. Um, proper planning should have been done. Maybe tighten up. So what 
uh, the, the PSC has asked the health ministry is that we've, they've given them two months to come mm. back on this matter. Like what can they do better? What, what any SOPs or any procurement? There should be a proper procurement process in place. I mean, it's bizarre that this, this could have happened. Lah. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about the business side of things. I know we have criticised a lot about the government, you know, yeah. economic and things like that. So on the business side of things, right, Kazana apparently accumulates 5.44 billion worth of dividend and stake sale in the first 10 months in 2023. National That's treasure. That's a lot of money. <laughs> right? National treasure indeed. Yeah, yeah. So out of this 5.44 billion ringgit, um, 3 billion actually comes from dividends handed out by uh, 10 public listed companies. Um, of which they own 20% or more lah. And what is the number one company That Kazana owns in Busan, Malaysia today? CNB Not bad, not bad CNB. CNB So Bank. CNB Bank is the biggest contributor To that 3 billion uh, ringgit worth of dividend Apart from that, they also uh, trim some of their position So during these 10 months uh, Kazana had sold uh, some of the Naga shares Some of Time.com shares And all these have chipped in More than 500 million every deal so that everything adds up together, Kazana managed to make 5.44 billion in 2023. Do you think that is a good performance or a bad performance? I think for this year, it's pretty decent. I, I, I would think it's pretty good. Um, maybe the companies have all done their kitchen sinking in the past, mm -hmm. in the past few years, right? So right. 2021, 2022 was a good time to do all those kitchen sinking. So this is like, yeah, time to reap the benefits. Do you think this is a profit-taking activity or are they preparing their bullets for the next oh, economic that's, cycle. That's a good point. Or they are preparing for... Because now year end already. Ma, and we have the new budget out already. Ma. They are getting themselves ready to do some national service. I think if it's the first... I mean, the second option, which is preparing for a rainy day. I think that's a, it's probably one of the best times to do it. With, mm. with so much uncertainty in the market, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you were to get like a good buy or good, good value buy on any companies around the mm. world, maybe this is a good time to do it. And Kazana should consider that. But I do not discount that third option as well, which is... Which is for, national for service. For huh? National service. For national service. I mean, it is a national treasure after all. So you, you, can't, you can't help it. You, you can't, you can't correct, help correct. it. So. Do you think our pension fund, EPF, will have similar kind of performance this year or not? I, I certainly hope they do because I put money with them anyway. So oh, yeah, I, yeah. I hope they better have good performance this year. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I recall correctly, uh, up to June this year, they actually did not bad. They actually oh, did not bad. Is it? Yeah. Okay. From, from the Malaysian investment, also from their uh, OOC. So investment. next year can get 6% or not? Can mm. get 6 cents or not? Mm, I, that one I don't 6 know. 6% That one I don't, I don't know. know. But soon we will know because it's already year end. Very fast. Yeah. Very fast. Nothing from PNB, yeah. PNB didn't understand anything, yeah, because PNB also uh, is the is the country's. Um, mm. But PNB is more towards those investment funds, lah, right? Yeah, yeah. They are more of a unit, unit trust, unit trust. So they just need to be responsible. So they just come up with reports to show their unit trust investors only, lah. Anyways, that's all we have for today's episode of Weekly Roundup. Thank you for watching this video today. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Uh, I hope I hope you enjoy and we'll um, probably come back more often. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Quite, yeah. I quite enjoy today's session actually. I mean, really. Oh, please, yeah. please come every week. You know, you have handsome face somewhere. And we need to right. like, make, you, make you stay informed. That's the whole point of us doing this is to, ed is to educate you guys. Yeah. So if you would like Ryan to come back every week, like the video yes. and subscribe to the FAQ show. And yeah, we will bring we will him on the you. show every we single week. We will see you. All right, see you guys next Take care. week. Bye-bye.